being, you know, eight and a half months pregnant and scared to leave my house. And it's been a little tough the last few weeks. Yes, Justin, bring that bottle. Okay, sip it because I'm giving you the tea. Mercedes. <sighs> Honey, I knew this question was coming. Woo, child. You guys, I am here with my first guest that ever sat and took the sip. Please welcome from Shaw's of Sunset, Gigi, everybody. Hey, Justin. Um, so a lot has changed since <laughs> we talked last. First off, you were my first guest on Just the Sip. And I you were actually my first returning guest. Am I? Yes, I've uh, never yeah. had a returning guest before, but I felt like so much had changed since the last time we talked that we have to get back together. Yes, yes. But am I not a woman of my word? Okay, let's talk about that because I think a lot of people <laughs> love to say, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to have a baby by myself. I don't need anybody. You went ahead and you went through this process and you are how many months pregnant right now? I'm eight and a half months pregnant. <laughs> I'm gonna have a baby. You're gonna do this on your own? I am, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do it next year. Are you so happy that you did not second guess yourself and that you stayed steadfast and followed your heart in this? I am, I really, really am. I mean, I, it would have been amazing to have gotten your sperm, Justin. <laughs> baby number two. <laughs> Hello. But you know, I'm really happy I didn't listen to all the, the, the chitter chatter, outside noise of people, you know, ridiculing me for having these ideas and wanting to do something like this alone. I still get a little bit of that, you know, side noise, you know, why are you doing this? It's so selfish, yada, yada, but it feels so right. Because in the Persian community, it's like a no-no for someone to have a baby without a husband or a father being present. You don't, it, it, it's so taboo. It's so taboo in the Persian culture to do something like this. It's, and it's not like, you know, I have some sort of issue that I'm not looking for a man. I'm choosing to not, you know? So yeah. that's very questionable. But thank God I've had really amazing parents that have just been so supportive. Yeah, no, for sure. But it's, you know, it's crazy because we, you know, we hear about people going through this process, but we never get to talk to someone who went through this process. So I'm going to take this day in order to really educate myself and bring people the facts. This wasn't an easy road for you. You hit some bumps in the road. Can you tell us about some of those bumps? Yeah, I mean, honestly, from start to this point, it's just been really, really it's been like this the whole time just finding the sperm you know that's like people don't realize like what a task that is to find the sperm because it's like when you're in a relationship you're in love you're not thinking about the genetics and this and that but when you're looking through someone's file and you're building a baby it's there's a lot of pressure <laughs> how many files did you go through Oh my God. So I hired a company and they basically sit down with you for hours talking and realizing what you're looking for, what you want, genetics, you know, aesthetics, personality, psychology, all that. And then they start scanning the nation for every wow. bank and everything. So only 1% makes it through to them that they send the file over to me. And their files are like 47, 50 pages each. Wow. Yeah. So you know everything about your baby daddy everything does he know anything about you like has he been told who you are he's he's strictly anonymous so i can't break any of those you know rules and stuff and whatnot to try to like find him and reach him and do all that but you know it's strictly anonymous he did he did offer an adult photo of himself a lot of the donors usually offer like a childhood photo yeah. He offered an adult photo, and I was like, okay, wait. So the genetics are pristine, and he's good looking. I'm like, why is he not my man? Could we not find his ass? <laughs> Could we not find his ass? Hello. 
you know, going through this process, did you ever have doubts or did you ever second guess your decision? Because I feel like such a life changing, you know, thing like this would make me second guess and start to worry if I'm making the right choice. Yeah, 100%. The first uh, baby transfer that I did with the embryo, which, you know, people are seeing on Shaw's, which I, I eventually lost. But um, the, it was like a couple nights before I was going in for the transfer. And I all of a sudden freaked out. I was like, oh my God, what if this guy's like a serial killer or like a pedophile yeah. and he lied about everything in his files and Oh my God. So I just like turned into an FBI agent. I went online. I just started searching a million things. I may or may not have found him. And <laughs> women turn into FBI agents when it comes to children or when it comes to dick. I've never, I've never done that before. And my girls do that when they're like in a relationship with a guy and they feel hurt or heartbroken. Yeah, yeah. I've never done it. So it was, I was impressed. But um, I was more impressed that everything that he says about himself and that the profiling person wrote about him in his file was spot on. So I was so relieved. But I did. I got cold feet. It was almost like, am I looking for an excuse to not do this? Or I don't know. Yeah. So how long after the first implantation did you miscarry? So it wasn't a miscarriage. It turned into an ectopic pregnancy. So um, it was, I was um, seven weeks pregnant, eight mm. weeks pregnant, something like that. I, w I went in for my, um, my first ultrasound, which they were going to put up on the screen, and I get to see it um, on the screen and whatnot. When I went in for the ultrasound, they couldn't find the embryo sitting inside of me. They were the first they were just sort of like not saying anything to me and I'm sort of like thinking okay this is what they do and um, I just kept waiting and waiting and they kept looking and they're like we're not seeing it but my blood my blood work was telling them I am pregnant yeah so it was a little bit of a confusion for them and um, did you feel pregnant I felt pregnant um, but you know then again with IVF you, you're injecting so many hormones so they are basically tricking your body into thinking you're pregnant before they actually transfer it. So when they do transfer it, your body already has been that much pregnant. Yeah. So the whole science stuff behind it. So I did feel it. I mean, I was really agitated. I remember Beyonce's um, Coachella concert thing was on TV and I was sitting down watching it. And my mom's like, is that Beyonce? I'm like, would you open your eyes and look? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, God damn it, that's Beyonce. Who else would it be? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I have the hormones raging. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're coming up on being a mother, which is, I think, one of the greatest gifts you could ever ask for in your life. What, are you ready? Are you afraid? What's going through your mind? What do you hope this little boy is like? Is like? Oh man, Justin, honestly, we are living in such a weird time right now with this whole coronavirus situation that it's changed everything for everyone. But being, you know, eight and a half months pregnant and scared to leave my house and I can't go to doctors regularly anymore, you know, and I have an autoimmune disease and I, I'm going through the issues with that and knowing that I have to end up getting isolated in a room. It's just, I, it's been a little tough the last yeah. few weeks. It's been tough. It's been scary. Um, you know, I'm knowing that, you know, I can only have one person near me in the hospital and that all my family can't come see me. And if this isn't, this wasn't a part of what I thought it was going to be like, you know, 100%. Excited, but it's just hard right now to see past what's happening. Who did you choose to be with you on that day? I don't know. Yeah, my mom is like, oh no, I have to be there. But my sister, she's like, no, I should be there. So I don't know. I don't know yet. Probably not. I would be so scared at this point to have a baby and bring a child into this world, but obviously you are a strong woman. You have figured out other things. Among the coronavirus, 
how has your rheumatoid arthritis affected being pregnant? So um, typically when you're pregnant, your body is supposed to go into a natural remission. What happened was because I was pregnant, it turned into an ectopic pregnancy, which then ruptured. And um, actually on um, the episode of Shaw's, you guys will see, I end up in the emergency room and they have to surgically remove both my fallopian tubes. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was a rough, rough road. So because of that process, my doctors believe that my body went into some sort of a shock and yeah. my rheumatoid arthritis came back times 10 and attacked me. So through this pregnancy, I've been receiving, you know, the IV infusions that I was getting, but at a different dosage, a different type of method. And right now I have three doctors and they're all planning the day to induce me. And then right there in the hospital, they're going to stick the IV in and get me started back on the hard stuff. To get ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so funny because we have this conversation all the time. I actually had it the other day with um, Carissa on Daily Pop. And we were talking about families who are non-conventional telling and explaining to their kids how they came about. And Joe Zarin just had this situation where her daughter, Allie, at a later age in life, found out that she was a product of a sperm donor. Obviously, you can't hide from your kid. You're famous. Uh your story is out there. Thank God. But how are you going to explain that to him? Like, what's your thought process? Have you gotten to that part yet? Are you just trying to get him home and safe? That's the first thing I was thinking about. I was like, okay, well, obviously children all go through that phase where they hate their parents, you know, and everything is the parent's fault. So I know that I'm going to get to that point where my son's going to say, why didn't you give me a dad? Why were you so selfish? And you were just thinking about yourself and you know, and you, you know, didn't give me a dad or when they're five or six years old and then they're in school and it's father's day and they're all painting little cards for dad. And, you know, it's, it scares the shit out of me. And, and when I saw um, Andy Cohen in New York, I said to him, I said, what are you going to say when, you know, Ben says, why yeah. don't I have a mommy? Why did you, you know, and he's like, I honestly don't know, but You'll figure it out and just know that your love should be enough. Yeah. And they'll get it one day. No, for sure. Um, I have to ask, because, girl, Shervin stepping on your toes? What, what's going on with this weed business? Is that obvious? <laughs> I was like, I'm so, wait, hold on. We have to talk about this because let's friend group 101. If I'm going to be a real estate agent, you can't just jump in the real estate game while you just came on the show. If I'm going to do weave, guess what you can't do? You can't do weave. That's a respect situation. Right. How did you find out about the weed, first of all? And yeah, how did you find out? That's what I want to know. Did he call you and tell you? <laughs> he, he denies it till the day he dies, but you know, that's fine. I have people who can vouch for what happened. Um, so Obviously, I have Wusa, you know, which is a company I own 100% of. I designed it. I created the products. I did everything. Then I went into farming. I have a, a partner, and my partner and I decided we're going to start farming hemp. And we got involved with these very large people. And so we have now three states which were mass producing, yeah, hemp. It's a huge um, situation. So. Um, at one point I was looking for a source of cash, quick cash to get into this and, you know, get, get, get it going. And I sort of talked to Sherbin and I told him what I was doing. I told him concepts. I wasn't very detailed with him on the names of the people or whatnot. I just told him, this is what it is. He's like, Oh, let me try to middleman for you and see if I can get you an investor. He sat in on that. They're looking at the projections and they're like, do you, Sherbin's negative Nancy, like, no, that's not real looking. I don't think that's possible, yada, yada. About two weeks later, I get a phone call from a friend in Sydney, Australia. And he's saying, oh, I didn't know that Sherbin was uh, doing the same stuff as you. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, he hit me up uh, looking for this investment deal saying he wants to start farming. 
<gasps> and my heart just, it, it was like, okay, this guy must be misinformed. Maybe he's not saying something right. But the number he told me was the exact number that I was looking for. And I messaged him immediately and I said, you know, I hope you're not doing this um, and whatnot. He goes, his response was, I thought you said this business is set. Why do you care? Wait, first of all, you got the tea internationally. That was across oceans. In the Australia. And came back okay. to you. God is good. God is good with the tea. Then he had the nerve to say, dismiss it. Like it was no big deal. Like it was no big deal. He's like, oh, I thought you said it was set. Why do you care if I was getting into it or not? Were you filming at this point? No, we weren't filming. We weren't. This is way before we started filming this season. And when I saw that reaction, my relationship with Sherman had started to get a little rocky because I also found out one day that he was in his apartment with my ex-husband in his apartment trying to do a business deal with Sean. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yes, 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 Justin, yes. <laughs> yes, bring that bottle. Okay, drink for me. Man. I cannot drink right now. Sip it. Sip it because I'm giving you the tea. Okay. How did you find that out? And how is Shervin still alive? <laughs> We're talking about the man who held the divorce over your head for multiple years, would not let you get out of it, strung you along, wasted money on court and mediation and all this bullshit. Shervin knows that you have been through, he has watched you go through this as a friend and also as a fan, watch yeah. these episodes. So how the hell did you find that out? I, I was livid. I went a few months without talking to him. We met up after that and he apologized completely and said, yeah, he should have told me, but you know, it was business is business and they were just trying to make money together. Yes. <laughs> See, here's the thing about Sherman and I, I, part of me will always have him in my heart because we were blood brother and sister. Yes. But I have seen him do it to so many other people. So I just were, never thought he would do it to me. You weren't surprised. I, I wasn't surprised. I just, I was surprised he was doing it to me, but then I'm like, okay, well, wait, this is the first time I'm on the come up and I have the bigger business ideas. You know, before that, I mean, Sherman's a business guy, you know, he's involved yeah. in that type of stuff. So now this is the first time my idea is pretty, pretty big. Yeah. I didn't even argue with him. I didn't fight with him. I didn't have any, you know, back and forth texting anymore. I just said that was it. Damn. This is every day. <laughs> this, look, I want everyone to do a sip when they're eight and a half months pregnant because y'all like, oh, tea? Oh, here's the tea. Let me give you the tea. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me tell you exactly what mother happened. Okay, it did. It is what it is. And, and, and I hope that maybe one day that we can be okay again just when you get to that point where you can take accountability maybe we can just move on and by the way this is what i say i see you yeah and i know you and yeah. we're good but exactly. i see you and i get you now exactly. and that's all you gotta do um mercedes honey i knew this question was coming Woo, child. mercedes Oh, Justin, Justin, Justin. Now, I've been following this story for a very long time, and I'm going to get MJ on this show to tell her side of the story, and I'm going to get Reza on this show to tell his side of the story, but I know there's legal proceedings, and there's crazy <laughs> You have been in this group since day one. Yep. How did this get so out of control? <sighs> Look. Look. Um, well, for me, it's been out of control with that particular individual, MJ, whatever you call her, from season two. I mean, we have not 
gotten along great, you know, for years. It's just been roller coaster. And the thing is, the only difference is that you almost like imagine like a me and like a Sheridan thing where I've seen Sheridan do to other people. I just never thought it would come from me. It's always been Reza and MJ going for people. And now, you know, MJ turned it on Reza, you know? So it's like, almost like, okay, well, didn't you see it coming? You know, she's gone through the list of people. It was just bound to be you next, you know? So, you know, and, and, and I, I talk with Reza on the daily and, and he knows how I feel about the situation. And I think that now that he's on the tail end of, of her damage, he probably, you know, empathizes with what I went through a little bit more. Now people have opinions about what MJ is doing, what Rez is doing. So, you know, it's just, it's the first time that those two are against each other. It's always been them and the cast against Golmesa. Everybody's always been against me season after season after season. I'm sitting here fighting them, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, damn, it's kind of refreshing that it's not on me for the first time. <laughs> You're like, a bitch got a break. A break to breathe, man. Like, did all I have to do is get pregnant? That's all I, I had to do? <laughs> I would have used my uterus a long time ago. It's, 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 been, it's, been, it's been tough. I have seen you and Mercedes come back from <laughs> I never in my life thought y'all could come back from. In your professional opinion, since you have experienced with both of them, fighting, making up, breaking up. Do you think these two will ever be able to patch that up again? Yes. Um, I truly want to say this to you. I am beyond happy for you. Thank you, Justin. I am beyond inspired by you because I may someday be a single dad and I will be proud of it. And I'm just so happy that you know, a lot of times celebrities come on our show and they say they're going to do shit and they never do it. And I'm so happy that you didn't let anyone get in your ear or second guess or talk you out of doing what makes you happy. And when that child looks at you, he won't wonder why he doesn't have a father. He will just wonder why he has a boss as mama. Okay. Oh, I'm too hormonal for these words right now. So know, that. know that. I love you. I, I honestly, I am so proud of you. I love you. Anytime for Justin, anytime. All right, you guys, to listen to this whole interview, go to wherever you listen to podcasts, click on Just a Sip and Sip This Tea. Like what you saw? Hit subscribe. You don't want to miss any new episodes of Just a Sip, and you can catch up on any past episodes. The tea was hot, I'm telling you.